Now that we've done some centripetal acceleration question, we often include forces that we did in the last chapter in a situation where you have centripetal acceleration because like any acceleration, some of forces is gonna give you ma. And centripetal acceleration is just a special case when you have uniform circular motion. A place where you have uniform circular motion is on a highway on-ramp. So they're talking about on a highway. So typically what you might see is here's a road and then to get on a highway, you go through a nice big loop and then it becomes the highway. So you have a circle here with a certain radius. They have a very large radius, so it's nice and gentle. So you're going in a circle, more or less, circular motion. And if your speed doesn't change, you have uniform circular motion and you know that your acceleration always points inwards as you go along and the size is given by this lovely formula. Then they also talk about this thing called banking. Let's draw a car. So here you have your four wheels. And if we cut right along there and draw the cross section, what you would more often than not see is that the road is not flat. The road in fact has a little slant to it if you cut the cross section and the car rides along like that. Say you have a very square car. Um, just to be clear, this is kind of the front or the back of the car. Say you're heading straight inwards into the page doing going through that circle. So here's the windshield and here you are. Not the best draw in the world, but hopefully you get the idea. Why we do that is because we know we want our acceleration to be inwards all the time. So we can use gravity to help us roll down the slope so we don't have to count on friction so often. And in fact, in the case of ideal banking angle, no friction is required. Remember that here we're dealing with tires rolling, so this is static friction, and static friction can be zero because it's a very lazy force, less than or equal to mu s fn. Again, because we know the acceleration is going to be purely in towards the center circle, which is over here, and that the car isn't flying off upwards or downwards into the road. So therefore, we know the acceleration only goes in that direction, given that we can choose our corner system such that they line up with the acceleration. We're gonna use X just to keep it simple. Make the distinction here. Before with slant problems, we often have the axes going along the slant, but that's because the acceleration was going along the ramp, not this time. This time the acceleration is perfectly horizontal because that's the circle you're traveling in. Travel around a very flat circle like that, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So let's draw a free body diagram. You only have two forces now because there's no friction. You have, because you're on earth, you have FG, which works out to MG and then it's touching the road, so it's gonna give you a normal force of some sort. Given that these, this is the angle here, it looks like it's a smaller angle. Once again, draw one really skinny, it becomes clear, and there's no other forces. And so we have to decompose all the forces into X and Y. In this case, MG is already all in the Y, so we're not decomposing that. We're just decomposing my normal force. And we know AX in this case, will be my AC, which is my V squared over R. And we know my AY would be zero. Let's start with the Y direction because once again, it's got that zero, which is very nice and easy to work with. Sum of forces in the Y is zero, it's equal to, we have FN and the Y going upwards, minus MG. FNY using the decomposition would be cosine theta, minus MG which is equal to zero, so we can solve for Fn. It's equal to mg divided by cosine theta. Then we move on to sum of forces x, go to max, which let's put it all together, mv squared over r. And the only force we have in the x direction is Fn x, which is Fn sine theta. Subbing things in, we have mv squared over r, it's equal to mg over cosine theta times sine theta. m cancels out, so it doesn't matter how heavy your car is, every single vehicle will act the same way. 
sine over cosine, as you know, is tangent. And so we can use that to solve for my theta. Theta is the inverse tangent of v squared over gr. g, we already took care of the direction, so it's just the magnitude of g. r is my 1.2 kilometers. So let's do a quick conversion here times 1,000 meters per kilometer. The velocity they give it to us, or the speed rather, is given in kilometers an hour. So we have to once again do that handy dandy conversion to give us 29.1666 repeating meters per second. So 29.16667 meters per second square. And hopefully you'll see that all the units cancel out because you have meter square, second square, and then meters per second square times a meter. So all the units cancel out as we expect, giving us just a ratio. Oops, did I forget to write that? Inverse tangent that I get 4.14 degrees. So the ideal banking angle is 4.14 degrees. This is a quick way to demonstrate how to work with centripetal acceleration in and uniform circular motion and forces. Remembering, of course, our preference to line up our axes with our acceleration, that everything should be quite straightforward. For more advanced problems, we can even put in friction and everything will work out exactly the same way. And you'll get to see one of those in class soon enough.